Wait a minute. Have you heard the strange tales of the whistler? I'm the whistler. I don't know what it is. It's a figure. I can't tell whether it's a man or a woman. It comes through the door and walks with outstretched arms toward my bed, reaching for me. Sunday night, and again CBS presents The Whistler. I, the whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And so I tell you the weird tale of jealousy. At the edge of the cliff overlooking the sea sits a gray stone mansion, weather beaten by the storms of several decades. To this mansion, Gilbert Durant brought his bride, Lucia. That was four years ago. Gilbert and Lucia were quite happy until last year when Lucia's half-sister, Beverly, came to live with them. And gradually, something began to happen. At first, Lucia realized that Gilbert's ardor was beginning to cool. He became more absorbed in his writing. Then she felt the cold clamminess of the stone structure almost creep about her and clutch her. Fear grew in her mind, a fear that nearly took her breath. It is evening now, and Lucia, having excused herself at dinner, tosses on her bed in a fretful sleep. No. No. Don't. Don't. Get away from me. Ah! No. 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 What's wrong? Benson. Benson, come in. What's wrong? Why were you screaming? Benson, I must have been dreaming. It was horrible. Well, you're white as a ghost. You're shaking like a leaf. Yes, I know. Oh, Mrs. Benson, I can't stand it. It's driving me mad. That makes the fourth or fifth time I've dreamed the same thing. The same thing in every detail. I've never heard you scream before. It always comes a little closer to me. Tonight it, it almost reached me. It? What do you mean? I don't know what it is. It's a figure. A human figure. But I can't tell whether it's a man or a woman. It comes through that door and walks slowly across the room with his arms outstretched, reaching for me. Are you sure you were dreaming? Oh, now that I think of it, it isn't like a dream. An ordinary dream. Its reality seems to carry over even after I'm awake. Oh, that's what's made you so ill. This dream, if it is a dream, means something? Is that what you think? It, it's a premonition? Perhaps. What time is it? Nine o'clock. Where's Gilbert? Your husband went horseback riding over an hour ago. Your uh, sister went with him. Beverly? Why didn't he ask me to go? Well, you know, you haven't been feeling very well lately. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Well, if you're feeling better, I'll go back to my room. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, I... I'll be all right. Good night. Good night, ma'am. Beverly. Gilbert. Lucia lies for a while, staring wild-eyed at the patch of moonlight on the bedroom door. And finally, she drops off to sleep. Then as the clock strikes half-past ten, the door opens slowly, silently. A figure steps into the room and moves noiselessly through the moonlight to Lucia's bed and stands staring at her. Suddenly, Lucia opens her eyes. Gilbert, don't, don't. Lucia, what's wrong with you? What are you doing in my room? Why, I just wanted to know how you felt. How long have you been standing there? Oh, just a few seconds. Oh, I, I was dreaming, I guess. And when I woke up, you startled me. Why were you yelling, don't, don't? I don't know. I, I haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> I talked to Dr. Handy about you today. Told him you were run down, and he suggested I get a tonic for you. I'll drop in at the drugstore on my way home tomorrow evening. A tonic? Yes. What is it? Oh, I don't remember. Something, something in strychnine. Strickland? Yes, he said it would give you an appetite. Where have you been, Gil? 
Oh, uh, I've been riding. Nice moonlight night. Very pleasant. Did she, uh... Did Beverly enjoy it? Yes, yeah, she's an excellent rider. I've decided to buy that filly from Thompson. Going over there tomorrow afternoon. Is Beverly going with you? Yes, yeah, she's a good judge of horseflesh. Why? Nothing, I just asked. Well, good night, Lucia. See you at breakfast? Uh, yes. Good night. Lucia waits till she hears her husband turn out his light, then slips quickly to her door and quietly down the stairs to the library. With every beat of her pulse, she hears Gil's words. Something, something in Strickland. Something, something in Strickland. She snaps on the light and steps to the shelf holding the encyclopedia. She runs her fingers down the long line of books. L-M-N-O, P to R. And then she stops and stares in terror. The S to T is missing. Lucia glances wildly about the room, and then she sees it there on the desk, the missing volume, and open. She rushes to the desk and stares down at the open page. Good Lord! It's true! It's true! I'll tell you what, Beverly, I'll leave the deal entirely up to you. Up to me? Oh, Gil, that's not fair. <laughs> Why not? Well, suppose she turns out to be a lemon. I don't think she will, because you're going to have the job of training her. Oh, you certainly flatter me. Not in the least. Oh. Good morning, Lucia. I just realized what time it was. You'll be leaving in a few minutes. Yes, it's nine this very minute. I better step on it. More coffee, Beverly? No, thanks. How do you feel, Lucia? Why, better, much better. You better eat something. No, no, I can't. At least some coffee. Yes, yes, I'll have some coffee. I've got to run. Uh, see you later, Lucia. Yes, Gil. And I'll see you this afternoon at two, Beverly. Yes, I'll meet you in town at two. Oh, uh, Gil, don't forget Lucia's medicine. I won't. Goodbye, Lucia. Are you meeting Gil in town, Beverly? Yes, he wants me to decide on that filly he's interested in. Where did you learn so much about horses? <laughs> well, it seems to be natural. Why don't you get interested in horses, Lucia? Why should I? What are you interested in? Well, I'm interested in a few things. My husband in particular. You don't act interested in anything. Really? Well, if you'll take my advice, you'll snap out of this coma and get some pep. If you like women with pep? Well, no man cares about a woman who sits around and mopes. I think you're a hypochondriac. Do you? You should do something about it. I intend to. I intend to do something about it. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Get out and do things. Play games, golf, tennis, swim, and ride. Maybe this medicine will fix you up. You know all about it, do you? What is it? Oh, I don't know. It's a tonic, a builder-upper. I wish I could believe that. At least you can try it. It won't hurt you. No? I wonder. <laughs> Come in, Doctor. Well, Lucia, why would you call me out here? What's wrong? Uh, I just couldn't make it into town. Oh, it can't be as bad as that. Did Gilbert talk to you about me yesterday? Oh, I saw Gil for a few moments at the club during lunch. Said you were run down. Did, um, did you give him a prescription for me? <laughs> I never do that until I've examined the patient. You didn't give him a prescription? Well, no. What did you suggest for me? Oh, I don't know. Just mentioned a few tonics he might get for you. Spoke of beef, iron, and wine, and sherry and egg, and well, I don't remember what else. And you mentioned nothing specifically. Don't think so. I see. What seems to be wrong with you, Lucia? I don't know exactly. Something has been happening to me that... Well, frankly, I... I'm afraid I'm losing my mind. Oh, come now. We all feel that way at times. I'm serious. Things happened to me in the night... What sort of things? First, I thought they were just nightmares. But when you have a nightmare, you wake up and the fear is gone. You realize the truth. This vision that comes to me haunts me through the waking hours as well. Vision? Something. I think it's a person comes through my bedroom door, approaches my bed with outstretched arms as though it intends to strangle me. Each time it comes a little closer, 
My fear is that eventually it will get to me before I wake up. Hmm. You always dream the same dream? If it is a dream, yes. Who is the person? I don't know. And you don't think it's really a dream? No. I think it's a premonition. Well... Have you any basis for such a fear in real life? Is there someone or something that you're afraid of? Doctor, I'm convinced that they're not dreams. And I'm not asleep. Oh, nonsense. I'm positive they're not mere dreams. Well, I think it's all due to your rundown condition. You probably don't sleep as soundly as you should, and so you transfer sounds in the night to dreams, nightmares. That's exactly what I mean. If I'm only half asleep, I may be transferring actual movements and sounds into dreams. In other words, if someone slams the door in the night, I may half hear it and... And attribute it to a dream. Yeah, go on. And perhaps I'm not dreaming. I think you'd better come into town and have a thorough physical. You mean a checkup by a psychiatrist? Well, I may have someone to help me. It's the usual thing, you know. Oh. Oh, Dr. Henry. I'm so frightened. Oh, no, 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 no. Everything's going to be all right. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'm going to die. Someone is trying to kill me. You're not going to die. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'll call you and make an appointment. Very well. In the meantime, try not to think about it. Keep your mind on something on the brighter side. Yes, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> Yes, try, Lucia. Try hard to keep your mind on something brighter. But you can't, can you? <laughs> that awful gnawing of jealousy and fear occupy every moment. Gil and Beverly, Gil and Beverly. How could they do such a thing? <laughs> then, as the afternoon fades and dusk sets in, there is a knock at Lucia's door. Are you asleep, Lucia? No, not asleep. How are you feeling? Why? I seem to have developed a headache. Have you eaten anything today? No, I didn't care for anything. Well, this will help them. Better take a dose now. I'll measure it for you. What is it? Why, it's the tonic. Did Dr. Hanby prescribe it? Oh, yes. Yes, he did. Where's Beverly? Down in the library. Did you buy the horse? Yes, Beverly thought she was a fine animal. I didn't know Beverly knew so much about horses. She's a horsewoman after my own heart. Is she? Rides like the wind, too. She had intended to go home tomorrow. She's staying on? She's got to. I wouldn't think of her leaving now. Why not? Well, for one thing, she's going to train the horse. And what else? Why, uh, nothing else. Here, take this. A little bitter, but you'll get used to it. Gail! Go ahead. It won't hurt you. I don't want it. And why not? It, it has poison in it. Well, I suppose it does have a little, yes. But only enough to act as a tonic. I don't want it. I won't take it. Are you going to act like a child? Take it and quit arguing. I won't. I won't. This is ridiculous. I tried to do anything for you and you act like a spoiled kid. I can't take it. You're impossible, Lucia. <laughs> I'm afraid. You need this medicine, but you're too confoundedly stubborn. You'd rather sit around and mope all day. <laughs> Very well, there it is. You can take it or not. I'm disgusted trying to help you pull out of this. Good night. No. No, 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 wait, Gil. I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't care whether you do or not. I'll take it. Terribly bitter. And take another dose around 11. Gil, where's Mrs. Benson? Why, I told her she could have the night off. Thought she might like to spend the evening in town. You let her off? Yes, yeah, she's been sticking pretty close lately. Oh, yes. Yes, she has. Good night. Good night, Lucia. <laughs> wrong, Gil? You look upset. I am. Lucia didn't want to take it. No? Why not? She's afraid of medicine. What are you going to do? She finally took a dose of it. If I know her at all, she'll never take another drop. Well, she's got to take it, Gil. Got to figure out a way to make her take it. It can't be disguised. It's too bitter. Try something else. No, I'll try and coax her into it again. Isn't there something that tastes more pleasant or something that you could put in milk or orange juice? I, I don't know. Well, I'll find something. Of course you will. You've got to. I think Mrs. Benson is the cause of her dislike for medicine. She's keeping her upset. I'm going to let Mrs. Benson go for two or three days. 
And maybe something can be accomplished. I'll speak to her now. Well, Benson, what are you doing standing here in the dark? I, I, I was just going upstairs to see if Mr. Durand wanted anything before I went out. I see. Oh, uh, by the way, I'm staying home for a couple of days, and I thought that since you've been staying so close to the job, you'd welcome a few days' leave. Leave? I, <laughs> yes, but Mrs. Durant may prefer that I stay. I think you'd better get a little rest yourself. You needn't come back till Friday. But I, I, I don't need a rest. You come back Friday. Yes, very well, sir. I'll run up and see her before I go. going into town for the evening. I'm leaving in a few minutes, but I had to see you. I'm glad you came up. I've got to talk to someone. I know now they're not dreams. They are premonitions. And I know who's trying to kill me. Who? My husband and Beverly. I know. You know? I just heard them talking low in the library. They were talking about the medicine. He said you were too stubborn and probably wouldn't take another dose. And she said he'd have to find some way to make you take it. And it is poison. They want me out of the way. I got angry because I refused to take it. Oh, oh, yes, and there's something else. He just told me that he would not be going into town for several days and told me not to come back here till Friday. Good Lord. I'll go on into town as planned, but I'll slip back toward midnight and come up the back way. And I won't take a thing that gets me. I'll be back at midnight. Thank you, Benson. Good night. Good night, ma'am. <laughs> before 12, Mrs. Benson returns to the mansion. No lights are burning, so she makes her way quietly through the back entrance, slips up the stairs and taps lightly on Lucia's bedroom door. Mrs. Durant! Mrs. Durant! Then she turns the knob, opens the door and snaps on the light. Mrs. Durant, are you here? Then Benson steps quickly toward the bed. The bed is empty, but a horrible sight meets her eyes. Oh! Blood all over the bed. They've done it. They've murdered her. Give me the police department. All right, Mrs. Benson. What happened this evening? Well, earlier in the evening, Mr. Durant told me I could have the night off since I'd been staying close to Mrs. Durant for some time. Mm -hmm. And then later, he said he decided to let me off until Friday. But I didn't want to go, and he insisted. Is there anyone else in the house? Yes, Mrs. Durant's half-sister, Beverly. Did you leave the house? Yes, but I went up and told Mrs. Durant I'd be back about midnight. If you had till Friday, why did you come back at midnight? Because we, we were both frightened. Of what? Well, Mrs. Durant had been having premonitions that someone was trying to kill her. Who was trying to kill her? She didn't know, but she was terribly frightened. Is that all? No. Her husband tried to get her to take some medicine he had brought home. She refused, and he got angry. How do you know he was angry? I I heard him talking about it to Beverly. They were in the library. And he told Beverly that Lucia was very stubborn. And Beverly said that he'd have to think of some other way. Did Mrs. Durant suspect her husband and Beverly of trying to do away with her? Uh, yes, she did. She was convinced that Mr. Durant and Beverly were in love and wanted her out of the way. So you came back tonight because you anticipated that something was going to happen. Yes. Hmm. The house was dark, so I came up the back stairs, knocked on her door, and when I got no answer, I came in, turned on the lights, saw she was gone, and then I saw the bed all covered with blood. She wouldn't take the poison, so they did it another way. That's what they planned in the library. Where are they now? Any idea? Well, they didn't expect me back tonight. So they've probably gone to dispose of the body, intending to come back here and clean the place up later. I see. Anybody else know about Mrs. Durant's fears? Yes. She talked to Dr. Hanby. I called him right after phoning the police and told him about it. He knows. Uh, Dr. Hanby, Captain Rick, what in the world is the meaning of this? From all indications, Mrs. Durant has been murdered and the body disposed of. Dr. Anderson, Mrs. Durant told you that she was afraid that something was going to happen to her. That she was going to die. What? Who told you that? Mrs. Benson here. I see. 
Well, she did call me in this morning. She'd been having strange dreams. Premonitions, she called them. I called them hallucinations. Who did she think it was? Well, she couldn't tell whether it was a man or a woman, but someone was always approaching her bed with outstretched arms, trying to choke her. Do you think it was more than a dream? Well, she was a sort of hypochondriac. I asked her to come into town where I could give her a thorough examination. I didn't take her story too seriously, but... Well, this certainly puts a different slant on the entire picture. Yes, we haven't found the body. I have men out searching now. We'll find it. Oh, here's Mr. Durant and his sister-in-law. They found him about a half mile down on the beach. How are you, Durant? What in the world goes on here? Oh, what's wrong, Doctor? Take a look at that bed. Good Lord, what's happened? Lucia, where, where is she? We thought you could enlighten us on that point. What do you mean? Is she dead? Where is she? Gil. Gil. Give her some water. She'll be all right in a minute. But what's happened? We think your wife has been murdered. Murdered? But I... What are you doing here, Mrs. Benson? I thought you were gone till Friday. Why did you tell her to go until Friday? Why, I, I thought she needed a rest. She's been having long hours. Where, where is Lucia? Where have you and your sister-in-law been? Why, I, I slept upstairs and saw Lucia was asleep, so we decided to take a little ride down the beach. It was still early. Didn't take anything with you? Certainly not. What do you mean by that? What would we take? I don't know. I just asked. Did you two try to get Lucia to take some medicine? No. Wait a minute, Beverly. That won't do any good. Yes, we did. She was run down and needed a tonic, but she refused to take medicine. Why did she refuse? I don't know. Maybe she was afraid of being poisoned. That's ridiculous. Why should I want to poison her? I love Lucia. How long has your sister-in-law Beverly been here with him? Well, I, I don't know. It's quite some time. Just a minute. Are you inferring that Gil and I'm I... not inferring anything. I'm merely asking questions. Well, whoever suggested such a thing is lying. Why, well, Gil and uh, Lucia... Just were... a moment, Beverly. Mrs. Benson, what have you been saying? What did you tell them? I told them the truth. Do you think I planned to kill Lucia? Is that it? Yes. You and this woman. Why, that's ridiculous. You tried to get her to take some medicine. She knew you were in love with her sister, and you were trying to poison her. When did she come to that conclusion? She had premonition. That means nothing. And besides, I heard you talking, you and Beverly, planning the whole thing. What? She's out of her mind. I heard you, I tell you. When you realized Lucia would, wouldn't take the medicine, Beverly said you'd have to think of some other way. Some other way to, to what? To get rid of her. What else? This is the most amazing thing I ever heard of. Dr. Handy, you know better than this. Do you think I had a reason uh, back of wanting to know about various medicines? No. No, I, I didn't. Not at the time, but... But now... Now what? Well, I'm sorry to say it all adds up to something suspicious. Seems more than just coincidental. Do you... Do you think I killed Lucia? Well, look about you. Look at the room. What else am I to think? What was the tonic you tried to give your wife? It had strychnine in it. That right, Durant? Why, Yes. It was one of the, the things Dr. Hanby mentioned. It was iron, quinine, and strychnine. Did you mention that, Doctor? Well, I suppose I did. It's a commonly known tonic. Did you add anything else to it, Durant? Certainly not. How about it, Sergeant? What's the report? Why, well, uh, a bottle contained iron, quinine, and strychnine, and a heavy content of arsenic. Arsenic? But, but it, it isn't possible. I, I put nothing in it. Where would I get arsenic? Well, it was in there just the same. Good Lord, Doctor, it... It isn't true. You know it isn't. I hate to say it, Gil, but the evidence looks bad for you. Benson knows what all this is about. She's lying. She knows Gil wouldn't do such a thing. She's back of it all. Why? I don't know, but believe me, I'll find out if I have... That'll do. Under the circumstances, I think you'd all better come down to headquarters so we can keep you separated. Come on. And no more talking. Forty-eight hours pass. Hours of relentless grilling, endless questioning. Finally, Gil and Beverly are released on a writ of habeas corpus. Now weeks have gone by, and Lucia's body has not been discovered. And so the district attorney is forced to make a public announcement that in spite of the apparent evidence, no murder charges can be preferred against Gil and Beverly due to lack of corpus delicti, the failure to produce Lucia's body. Now Beverly and Gil are in the library. Beverly, I... I want you to know how wonderful I think you've been, the way you've stuck right beside me through this thing. I know it's been a trial for you, and... Well, you're one girl in a million. Thanks, Gil, but it isn't over yet. They won't stop their search for Lucia's body, and if they find it, we haven't a chance. I know, but what can we do about it? 
Well, why couldn't we leave the country? Together? Not necessarily. They'd be sure to follow us. We could go separately in different ways and... And meet someplace later on? Is that what you mean? Yes. That's what I mean. That seems a bit mad. That would equal an out-and-out confession. But, Gil, if they find Lucia's body, we haven't a chance. It's too strong against us. We never could come back, Beverly. Oh, what of it? I, I don't want to die, Gil, and I don't want anything to happen to you. Beverly, I... I don't know what to say. I'm frightened, Gil. I can't stay here with such horrible fear hanging over me. I'll go mad. If you don't go, then I will. I'll leave tonight. Please, Beverly, I need you more than ever now. Please don't go. Don't worry, Gilbert. She won't leave you. Lucia. Good Lord. I won't let her leave I'll see that you both go together and stay together for a long, long time. Lucia, what, what, what does this mean? We thought you were dead. Disappointed, I Where have you been? What happened to you coming to that? You thought I was dead. Well, I'm not. I'm live enough to pull this trigger. I've been behind those drapes and I heard every word you said. Now I know you're in love with each other. Now I know you wanted to do away with me. In love? With Beverly? From the day she came here. She took you away from me. I did not. We never thought of such a thing, never. It never entered my mind. Why do you lie about it? You do love her. Why don't you admit it? I love Beverly. Yes. You certainly have a vicious mind, Lucia. For the first time, I see you for what you really are. I never even thought of such a thing. But now that you mention it, I... I realize the truth. Yes, I do love Beverly. You don't. Why shouldn't I? And it's Lucia's fault. She's the cause of it. A suspicious-minded devil... She let her imagination run away with her. She built this thing up, and now it's boomeranged on her. Oh, what a mess you've made of things, Lucia. You mean... You and Beverly... They didn't plan... Certainly not. You must have been out of your mind. Oh, Gil. Gil. I thought... I... I was sure. Oh, Gil. I'm sorry, Lucia, but that's the way it is. And you've no one to blame but your own miserable self. No one to blame but her own miserable, jealous, suspicious-minded self. <laughs> Lucia planned the whole thing from the beginning. She thought they were in love, thought they were planning to kill her. Lucia never had a dream, never had a premonition. She planted that in the housekeeper's mind and in the doctor's. She put the rat poison in the tonic. She put the bedroom in disorder, cut herself of smeared blood on the bed, and then disappeared. But when she read that they couldn't bring a murder charge without the body, she came back to kill Gil and Beverly herself. You see, Lucia didn't know about that little article in the law called Corpus Delicti. <laughs> CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written by and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next Sunday, 9.15, I, The Whistler, will return to tell you the eerie tale of Back from Beyond. <laughs> Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>